Who were the three parties involved in the death of Garrett Foster? Two of them are known to the public right now. One was Foster himself. The other was the man who shot him, Daniel Perry. The name of the third person, who is also the second shooter, is unknown, but Austin police know his identity and they released him. Everyone celebrating or justifying Garrett Foster's death is objectively wrong. First, let's address the lie that Foster was a member of Antifa and a communist. This is false. He was actually a member of the Big Igloo Boys, the right-wing anti-government group that wears Hawaiian shirts. Can't say the real word or this video might get deleted. And he was an active member of the Libertarian Party, which is strongly pro-free markets and respectful of property rights. He was an Air Force veteran and a Libertarian, not a Marxist and not a rioter. Second, Foster is widely criticized by right-wingers for bringing his rifle to a protest as if he was looking for a fight. These criticisms are completely anti-Constitution. The First Amendment guarantees freedom of speech, assembly, and association. He had a right to assemble with other people and to protest peacefully, and he was protesting peacefully. The Second Amendment guarantees the right to bear arms, and he was exercising that right. It shouldn't be special that he took his gun to a protest because open carry of weapons is common in Texas. People in Texas take their rifle to restaurants and to go grocery shopping. Armed but peaceful protests are equally common in Texas, and they have been for a few years. Moreover, Republicans have been having armed protests across America over the last few months and with no incidents. The right wing didn't criticize them for practicing their First and Second Amendment rights, but they were ready and eager to criticize Foster and blame him for his own death. They were happy to put the blame on him, based on their own political prejudices and either some half-assed evidence or no evidence at all. The man in the car who shot Foster is Sergeant Daniel Perry, a current cavalry soldier stationed at Fort Hood in the city of Killeen, 67 miles north of Austin. According to a statement published by Perry's lawyer, Perry was in Austin for work that night, doing food deliveries for extra money. It seems reasonable on the surface. The problem is, he had to drive 67 miles to Austin, where there have been protests every day for nearly two months. Even though the cities of Dallas, Waco, and Georgetown have large populations with people who use the delivery apps and are closer to where he lives. But he drove 67 miles to Austin, where people from around the county and from neighboring counties were protesting and had been for weeks. Let's go directly to the videos that document exactly what happened the night of July 25th. According to his lawyer, Perry had no idea there was a protest happening in that part of Austin, and that he couldn't see any protesters until after he made the right turn onto the street they were occupying. However, in this dash cam video from another car, it's clear that the protesters are congregated at one part of the intersection, right up against the crosswalk, and the crowd of people is clearly visible to the other three parts of the intersection. Some of them are even walking towards the middle. Yes, blocking the street is illegal, but that's a minor infraction. People who do that are arrested for one hour and released with a fine and they move on with their lives. A minor infraction does not merit killing someone. And if you are justifying Foster's death based on that minor infraction, you are not pro-life. Now, we see Perry turning right on a red light. It is legal to do that in Texas, but only if the way is clear of oncoming traffic and pedestrians. The way was obviously not clear of pedestrians, and Perry chose to drive ahead anyway, right into the crowd. Well, it looks like Foster's not the only one who did something illegal that night. Once Perry had driven into the crowd, the crowd surrounded his car and people started banging on the car. Perry tried accelerating while Foster was pushing his disabled fiance in her wheelchair out of the way. Perry likely would have run her over if the crowd had not surrounded his vehicle and angrily stopped him. Next, Perry's lawyer claims that Foster had his rifle pointed at Perry the whole time and that Perry feared for his life because of that. We can see that's also false. Here in slow motion, we clearly see that Foster's rifle is pointed down before and during the moment he is shot. We can also see that Foster never fired his rifle. Here's a photograph taken just seconds before Perry shot Foster. We can clearly see that Foster's rifle is pointed down 
Not at the low ready, but down. Next, there are gunshots. Foster falls dead, the crowd flees from the car, and Perry uses this opportunity to drive away. People assume that Foster fired because in the first video that to be published by the media, we hear two different guns firing, even though we can't see either of them. The Daily Project manager even called Foster an Antifa rioter and said, you can hear the AK-47 firing first. Both of these are assumptions, and they are wrong assumptions based on faulty circumstantial evidence. We see neither of the two in that early release video. We only hear the gunshots from two guns. But in this slow motion video taken from an angle facing Foster and the car, Foster's rifle is clearly pointed away from Perry, and the first muzzle flash is the one coming from the open window of the car. Foster falls, mortally wounded, there are more shots, and people are running and screaming. The gunshots falsely attributed to Foster sound significantly louder because Perry was much closer to the camera phone than the second shooter, and also Perry probably had a higher caliber handgun than the second shooter. But Foster didn't fire. How else do we know that Foster never fired his rifle? Because the Austin Police Department said so. In an official statement, Austin PD Chief Brian Manley said that both shooters turned themselves into the police. Someone else in the crowd, whose name the police have not released yet, was the second shooter. Perry fired his weapon at Foster, and someone else in the crowd fired his weapon at Perry's car. The delay between the first gun and the second gunshots indicates that the second shooter needed time to draw his gun. Both shooters were released by the police because both of them had some kind of a case to make for self-defense, and the police felt the need to investigate more before bringing charges against either shooter. The president of the Austin Police Association originally called Foster part of the faux Mike Ramos brigade and said that he was looking for a confrontation, and he found it. He was completely wrong. He has since publicly apologized and taken back those comments after all this new information has surfaced, making him look like a fool. Let's go to the motives of the parties involved. A look at Perry's recent tweets makes it abundantly clear he hates the police brutality protests and he fantasized about being able to shoot a protester. He even responded to a tweet by Donald Trump about protesters in different cities saying, quote, send them to Texas. We will show them why we say don't mess with Texas, end quote. It also turns out that Perry has a history of violent behavior. We know that he was injured in Afghanistan and has PTSD, which are not points against him. I understand those things. But he has been dealing with his PTSD in very toxic and harmful ways. He has previously been arrested and charged with assault causing bodily injury, we know from his tweets he doesn't like people from other ethnic groups, thus partially explaining his hostility towards the Black Lives Matter message. He has even wanted to throw kids into tree grinders, and he also wants to kill people over video games. What happened on July 25th is something that Perry had wanted for months, and we know he wanted it because we have it in his own words, in writing. But there's more. Perry was photographed several days later at the scene of the killing, harassing people who were having a memorial vigil for Foster. He went back to the scene of the crime to antagonize people, mourning the guy he killed. Now, let's go to Garrett Foster in his own words. Why was he practicing the First Amendment that night? They don't let us march in the streets anymore, so i got to practice some, some of our rights. Why was he practicing the Second Amendment that night? Well, our roommate got arrested and they stopped letting us march anywhere, so started carrying. Most importantly, what you won't see in the interview is that his fiance Whitney is black. Black Lives Mattered to Garrett Foster. He was not a Marxist. He was a man in love with a black life. Now, let's clear something up before anyone tries to put words in my mouth. Most people who say the phrase, Black Lives Matter, are saying a true statement. They're not members of the BLM organization. The organization, Black Lives Matter, has chapters in 16 cities in the United States. 
whereas there have been protests in over 150 cities. That's not the organization BLM organizing most of these events. It's a bunch of pissed off Americans exercising their First Amendment rights before they lose it, which is something that Foster was afraid of. The organization called Black Lives Matter has no credibility because its founders are self-admitted Marxists and have used the BLM brand to support the dictator Nicolas Maduro, who is the Butcher of Caracas, whose regime is so notorious for police brutality that it makes American police look like the Mickey Mouse Club. I should know because I've been working with Venezuelan dissidents for over three years and have worked with survivors of massacres perpetrated by the regime. However, Nicolas Maduro being bad does not make what's happening in our country acceptable. When the rest of us say that black lives matter, that's not taking away from the value of life of anyone else in any ethnicity. Foster said those words, and he was white, and not ashamed to be white. We say black lives matter to clarify that their lives matter too. Because it wasn't always the case. In our own Declaration of Independence, our Founding Fathers wrote that all men are created equal. However, the Three-Fifths Clause recognizing slavery in our Constitution established very clearly that all men were obviously not created equal in the eyes of the U.S. government and the several states. The 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were great victories for the people of our country, but the history of Jim Crow, the war on drugs, sentencing disparities, and the militarization of American police have led to these alarming statistics. The people saying Black Lives Matter are not the same as the organization that endorses communist dictators, and Daniel Perry was unable to distinguish between the two. The people who wasted no time blaming Foster for his own death, justifying his death, even celebrating his death, did so because they themselves crave violence. They projected their own politics onto Garrett Foster and Daniel Perry on nothing but an early released video where neither of the two men are on camera. Those people joyfully basking in the death of an innocent man are a cancer to this country. They want violence against people whose politics they disagree with. They're just as brainwashed as supporters of Fidel Castro, Nicolas Maduro, and Kim Jong-un. They crave a civil war in this country just as much as Antifa craves a violent revolution. And I am equally opposed to both of those bags of garbage. This is where my ancestors are buried. Am I not allowed to be here? No. Those of you who actually want to fight Marxists where they're in power and murdering people every day are welcome to join the Citizens Embassy of Venezuela, or the National Liberation Front of Venezuela, or to write to Secretary Mike Pompeo urging him that the State Department recognize the legitimate Venezuelan Supreme Court under Michelangelo Martin, or to make a donation to the Cuban exile nonprofit Brothers to the Rescue, or to join Yanmi Park in rescuing people who escaped from North Korea only to be trafficked in China. You are not fighting communism by celebrating Garrett Foster's death. What is crystal clear about the night of July 25th and backed up by hard evidence is that Garrett Foster was exercising his constitutional rights, that he never pointed his rifle at Perry, and that he never fired his weapon. What's also clear is that Perry has actually committed violence against people before killing Foster and not including the war that he has a well-documented aggressive personality, that he had wanted to shoot protesters, that he drove 67 miles to Austin, that he actually was able to see protesters in the street before making that turn, that he drove into a crowd of pedestrians, that he shot first and killed Garrett Foster, and that he came back to Austin to harass mourners. 
The one thing Foster did wrong that night he died was display a touch of arrogance, as we see in his well, interview from that night. Against the cops, I'm dead. And I think all the people that hate us and, you know, want to say shit to us are too big of uh, pussies to stop and actually do anything about it. So. The second half of that statement turned out to be wrong, as the evidence overwhelmingly indicates that Perry was looking for a confrontation, and we know how it ended. However, Foster was completely right about people like Perry being cowards. He didn't use that word, but that's the message he was conveying. Perry wanted to shoot someone whose politics he disagreed with, and he drove 67 miles and into a crowd of pedestrians to do it. And now he's claiming his innocence. He's hiding behind his military service and his Eagle Scout award, and his lawyer is blubbering that he had no idea what was going on, that he was in danger, and he was defending himself from a lethal act of threat. Well, I'm also an Eagle Scout. I'm even a former BSA firearms instructor who's taught over 2,000 young people how to safely operate a firearm. I also served my country for eight years as a reserve soldier and four years as a private contractor. So far, I've managed not to collect any assault charges or drive into crowds of pedestrians. After weighing all available hard evidence with what his lawyer is saying on his behalf, it is my opinion, based on that same hard evidence you just saw, that Daniel Perry is a coward, a liar, and a murderer. Moreover, I believe he is this way partially because of untreated PTSD and other mental health issues, and I pray he gets the help he needs. And if you were one of the people wrongly justifying or celebrating Garrett Foster's death, I hope that you too get the help that you need.